The Nun 2 releases in theatres on the 8th of September, so to get you ready here is your recap of The Nun so far. Hi guys, I hope you're all doing really well. My name is Sarah and welcome to What The Horror, the channel where we talk about horror movies old and new. The Nun 2 is a direct sequel to the original The Nun that was released in 2018. It sees the return of Thaisa Farmiga as Sister Irene, Bonnie Ahrens as Valak and Jonas Bloquette as Frenchie. And the story picks up four years later in 1956. Just in case some of you don't have the time or inclination to revisit The First Nun and The Conjuring 2 and are considering watching The Nun sequel and considering The Conjuring Universe can be as interwound as the Marvel Universe, I thought it would be fun to revisit the original and The Conjuring 2 and do a quick recap to get you prepared for the release of The Nun 2. The Nun opens at the Abbey of St. Carter in Romania, 1952. The Abbey has been infiltrated by an unseen evil entity and two nuns are trying to retrieve an ancient relic that will help them defeat the entity. One of the nuns is attacked by the unseen force but before she is killed she tells the other nun, Sister Victoria, that the evil wants a vessel, a human body. So to prevent this, Sister Victoria makes the ultimate sacrifice and takes her own life. Her body is later discovered by a local delivery man named Frenchie and word eventually gets back to the Vatican who now want the event investigated. They send Father Burke and Sister Irene, a novitiate currently training in England to take her vows to the Abbey in Romania. They meet with Frenchie, now haunted by visions, who acts as their guide and takes them to the Abbey. Frenchie explains that there is no written record of the Abbey and local people don't speak of it if they can, and if they ever do, they spit immediately after in an act of superstition. He also explains that the crosses that surround the Abbey are to keep an evil in, not out. As soon as the trio arrive at the Abbey, strange events begin to happen. When Frenchie takes them to the body of Sister Victoria, she is sitting in a different position to how he left her, and the blood on the steps of the Abbey is still fresh, despite it being weeks old. Inside, they meet the obviously suspicious-looking abbess, who tells them it is too late to speak to anyone tonight, but they may stay in the convent lodgings and return the next day. While Father Burke and Sister Irene stay, Frenchie returns home, but is attacked by ghosts along the way. We learn that Sister Irene, who has a very striking resemblance to one Lorraine Warren, helped by the fact that they're played by sisters, has experienced visions since she was a young girl, and her father believed her to be either mentally unstable or a liar. Word of her visions reached the church and Irene was helped by a bishop form. While her visions differed, they all ended the same, with Mary points the way. We also learn that Father Burke is what is known as a miracle hunter. He deals with the church's special cases, including exorcisms and possessions. Later that night, Father Burke is led into the woods by the vision of a boy he failed to save years ago and ends up buried alive. Sister Irene manages to find and save him in time and they discover books of the occult hidden in the grave. They take them in the hopes they will help them figure out what's going on. Back in the town, Frenchie learned of the death of a local 12-year-old girl, another victim of the evil from the abbey leaking out and infecting the town, turning crops to dust, leaving men blind and leading children to take their own lives. Worried about the safety of Father Burke and Sister Irene, Frenchie decides to return to the abbey. While studying the occult books, Father Burke learns that the demon at the abbey is Valak the Defiler, the profane, the Marquis of Snakes. Meanwhile, Irene enters the inner abbey and speaks to the other nuns, learning that they have been doing perpetual praying in order to keep the evil at bay. Irene also learns that the abbey was built by the Duke of St. Carter in the Dark Ages. The Duke wrote numerous books on witchcraft and the occult and used his knowledge to call on the forces of hell, who then used him to open a rift and summon a demon. The church stormed the castle, killed the duke and sealed the rift using an ancient relic, 
the blood of Jesus. The church then claimed the castle and instated nuns who would perpetually pray to keep the evil at bay. For centuries it worked, but in World War II, bombs fell on the abbey and broke the rift, freeing the demon. Sister Irene also learns that, like her, the nuns have seen what appears to be a nun stalking the halls at night. Yet this nun is not one of them. It is, in fact, the demon, Valak, taking on the form of a nun so that it can hide and move around amongst the others. It takes on different forms to deceive and prey on their weaknesses, with the goal to corrupt them all. Father Burke discovers that the abbess he and Irene were speaking to is actually dead and worries for Irene's safety. But it is too late. The gates have closed and Sister Irene has to stay the night. After revisions, she wakes and is attacked by Valak. She manages to escape and joins the other nuns to pray, but they're again attacked, with Sister Irene having a pentagram clawed on her back. Together, Frenchie and Father Burke find Sister Irene, and that's when Irene realises that the nuns she has been speaking to and praying with were merely visions, as the nuns are all dead, having been previously attacked and killed by Valak. Sister Victoria had been the last one alive, and her death was actually a sacrifice to stop the demon from getting a human host and leaving the abbey. Sister Irene takes her vows, believing all of her visions have led her here, a fact that seems to be confirmed when they find a statue of Mary with a beam of light reflected off her pointing finger to the location of the ancient relic that will defeat Valak. Once they have the relic, they try to locate the rift seal. Sister Irene is lured into a pentagram and possessed by Valak. Frenchie rescues Irene by smearing the blood of Jesus over Irene's face, casting out the demon. But in return, Frenchie is attacked and seemingly killed. Father Burke is then attacked and injured by one of Valak's snakes. Valak's attention returns to Irene as the demon attacks her in the pool of water above the seal. But Irene drinks and sprays Jesus' blood onto Valak and into the pool of water defeating Valak and sealing the rift once again. But all is not well, as it's revealed that not only is Frenchie not dead, but he has been possessed by the demon Valak, revealed by an upside-down cross on his neck. We then jump forward to 20 years later, when a familiar pair of demonologists, a certain Ed and Lorraine Warren, are helping with an exorcism on Frenchie. During the exorcism, Valak gives Lorraine a vision of Ed's death that terrifies her and results in her being shut up in her room for eight days. Now, I am aware that The Nun 2 acts as a direct sequel to The Nun, taking place four years later in 1956. However, I am also aware, like I said earlier, that The Conjuring Universe is pretty interwound and can jump from place to place. So I am also going to include a recap of Valak's activities from The Conjuring 2, just in case there's any link to them in The Nun 2. The film opens in Amityville, New York, 1976. Two months after the Lutz family fled their home, the church called in Ed and Lorraine Warren to see if they could confirm the house was actually haunted. One year before the Lutzes moved into the house, a man named Ronnie DeFeo had killed his entire family, but claimed he had been under the influence of something demonic. Lorraine has a vision and sees the demon Valak in a mirror in the basement. Valak causes Lorraine to strangle herself with her own hands and then shows her another vision of Ed's death. Later, Ed wakes from a dream with a vision of Valak stuck in his head, so he decides to paint it. This unnerves Lorraine and because of her fears, she asks Ed that they take on no new cases. Later, while at home with her daughter Judy, Lorraine falls asleep and has another vision of Valak. This time, Valak appears in her home with Judy also witnessing it. Lorraine follows Valak into Ed's office. Valak, who at first seems to have disappeared, grabs Ed's painting and attacks Lorraine. Lorraine is pushed further into her vision, now back in the basement of the Amityville house, and again sees a vision of Ed's death. She wakes to find she has been scratching something in her Bible. Meanwhile, it's now 1977 and the Hodgson family in London have been haunted by the spirit of a Bill Wilkins and 11-year-old Janet has been particularly targeted. The church, reluctant to get involved because of the media attention, asks Ed and Lorraine to investigate the case. 
Lorraine is reluctant because of her fears of Ed's life being in danger. She tells Ed of her visions, but he says they've never refused to help a family before and promises to leave if it becomes too dangerous. After investigating, the Warrens discover that the spirit of Bill Wilkins is merely a pawn being used by Valak. Every form that haunted the Hodgson family, Bill Wilkins, the Crooked Man, were all to hide Valak's true identity. With a prompt from Bill Wilkins' spirit, Lorraine realises that knowing the demon's name gives you power over it. She also realises that she already knows the demon's name, having previously scratched it into her Bible during a vision. With Ed and Janet's lives literally hanging in the balance and out of the window after Ed broke his promise to Lorraine, Lorraine names the demon Valak, the Defiler, the Profane, the Marquis of Snakes, and sends it back to hell. So that is your recap of Valak's activities in the Conjuring universe so far, excluding a brief cameo appearance in a photograph in Annabelle Creation. With the sequel's release next week, it will be interesting to see where the story goes next and how that links in with the previously released films. Let me know if you're going to be checking out The Nun 2 when it comes out in the comments down below. And if you're a fan of The Conjuring films, then I will leave a link to my Conjuring playlist here. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, so you don't miss out on upcoming Conjuring content. But in the meantime, thank you as always for stopping by. I really do appreciate it. Take care of yourselves and I will talk to you in the next episode. Bye.